I got a nice book report about my book, A Lineage of Dragons, from a person in China who was well informed about the Taoist internal arts and its history. So I will share it with you here. The book is mainly about Mr. Young, a secretive Qigong master who was Bruce Lee's uncle, mentor, and main Kung Fu teacher, and about his teachings. He wrote, here are some of the things from your book that really stuck out to me. Mr. Young and his story, very, very interesting. It seems that he belonged to a lineage which has survived the culls, which is very special. If that is so, not only did Mr. Young's traditions survive the more modern culls, like when the Red Brigade roamed the countryside killing and torturing all the masters, but it was one of only a few that has preserved the real thing. The beggar clan. Very, very interesting. My bet is that the beggar clan must have existed since ancient times. From what I imagine, those kinds of systems and traditions would have been kept very secret even before the 20th century. So I can understand from what you have written about him that if it's true, which I am inclined to believe it is, he was a very special and unique man indeed. Even having read about similar mysterious people before, it is still difficult to fully wrap my head around it. He reminds me of one character that a man Peter Moon writes about, who was also a Chinese wizard of sorts. It sounds to me like the characters you rub your shoulders with are more about the spiritual path but there is definitely a lot of common ground when it comes to the magical mystery side of things. The CIA connection is also very curious. I have heard a lot of things about that organization, so I'm not surprised to hear that these kinds of people were trained in these arts. You didn't have anything bad to say about Sid, so perhaps he was one of the good ones? To be honest, I have no idea what's happening with all that secret stuff, but it's interesting to hear more about these kinds of individuals and their involvement in these things. The invisibility skill you mention also correlated with other accounts I have heard about this ability. You said that it's not that the person becomes invisible, rather it's a form of mind control. They make you think they aren't there. All the interesting accounts of things aside, the thing I liked most about the book was your conversation on Taoism. For one thing, you subtly highlight the importance of meditation and the clearing of mind and emotion. It was in the Enlightenment chapter. I'll have to go back and read it again. I also really appreciate that you got into some detail regarding the importance of dealing directly with one's core of cultivating energy within the central channel rather than dealing with isolated areas of the body. That has clarified and highlighted some important things for me, as has your discussion of energizing and charging one's belly, head, and heart chakras, and the different uses they have. I understand from what you have written on those that I need to work with my belly a lot more something I already knew, but now even more so. The quotes from Chinese classics were also really useful. Taoism, I'm sure you will agree, transcends both East and West. Having lived in China for this long, I can see how certain remnants of it has survived to this day. I also appreciate your mentioning of virtue and its importance within Taoism. That is another key that is missing from Western traditions. The path of the wizard is the path of truth. Some can't handle it and commit suicide. Those that survive are dragons. Yes, more confirmation regarding things. Excellent. Respect. All in all, a very interesting, pleasant, and easy-to-read book. It has been great company for me these past couple of weeks.